morning, everybody. Uh, Pastor Aline is out of, uh, out of town this uh, weekend, and we welcome Pastor Deb Johnson, who's going to do the service today. Uh, bulletin has, uh, or you have lots of announcements in the, uh, in the, in the bulletin there. I'm not going to go through them all. We ask you that you read them all. The ones I'll talk about have to do with the season. Uh, when you leave the service today, the Advent devotionals and calendars are available on the uh, table outside. Advent readers are needed uh, for the rest of the season. Next week is open uh, right now. There are some uh, uh, requests on the angel tree outside. Look at those on your way out. If you want to order a poinsettia for Christmas, it has to be done by this Friday. So uh, read that announcement in your bulletin. And uh, my little thing is the uh, a week from this Saturday, we'll be setting up the Christmas tree and decorating the church. So if anybody wants to come, show up at 9 o'clock in the morning. There's a lot of things to be done. Thanks. Pastor Johnson. Good morning. Our prayer today is for patience, flexibility, and new experiences for all of us. I've been here before. It was prior to me becoming ordained. I was ordained six years ago and served at St. Timothy in Geneseo and have recently retired. So I think I'm in my final retirement. And I told somebody it's been a long time since I have supplied, so I'm working my way through somebody's bulletin that's totally different than my experience. So we'll ask for forgiveness now. <laughs> but it is a joy to be here with you. I'm connected in different ways to different people within this congregation, because I've been up in um, upstate for over 30 years. And that seems like a long time. But I'm going to talk a little bit about life in California as well. So thank you ahead of time for welcoming me and being here with us today. And I think I turn it over to somebody now. Or is it me? Oh. I need to look up to remind me of that.
I invite you to please stand for our confession and forgiveness. Siblings in Christ, in God's house, everyone is welcome. Those who seem like they have it all together, and those who feel like their world is falling apart. No matter who we are, there's room for us here. With that confidence, we turn to God in prayer, speaking the truth of our lives. Let us pray. God of today and God of tomorrow, you say, bring your full self. There's room for you here. You say, bring your hopes and your dreams. There's room for you here. You say, bring your grief and your prayers. There's room for you here. God of today and God of tomorrow, we know in our hearts that there is room for us here. Forgive us for withholding our full selves from you. Forgive us for giving only our Sunday best. Help, help us remember today and tomorrow. Amen. Family of faith, we who feel scattered are held together. We who have lost our way are forgiven and found. And we who are lonely are brought into the fold and told, there is room for you here. From generation to generation, this indeed is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are held we are forgiven, we are found, and we are indeed welcomed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
opposite. <laughs> Sorry about that. Over 100 people from the ages of 2 to 80 years old were asked the question, what gives you hope? From the voices of different generations, hear their answers. My two-year-old son. Dogs wagging their tails. Talking with young people. Kindness from strangers. Spending time in the woods. Waffles. Hands clasped in prayer. Social progress. The way my son calls everybody buddy. The ringing of church bells. Babies trying over and over to take their first step. The turning of seasons. Christian community. Books. Friendship with my adult children. Advocates for justice. Hearing children in the pew sing the hymns. The sunrise every single morning. <laughs> what gives you hope? Today we light the candle of hope to remind ourselves that God is at work in this world. The candle is lit. It's The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. is to possess the world's strongest nuclear force, Kim Jong-un. Black Friday sales rake in a record $9.12 billion from online shoppers. And locally, suspects paint swastika and slurs around Parenton. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Are there any kids young at heart? Yeah. 
So you want to come forward? All right. All right. How are you? And you are who? Hi, Carol. I'm best. We got another one. Yay! Oh my goodness. I agree, we do. We do. And we have to kind of make it fun, huh? So I got these unusual shoes on today. Look at them. What's, what's different about them? They, they don't have a heel. Yeah, there's no back to them. And what color are they? Blue. Why do you think I have blue shoes today? I got a blue thing on. This is called the blue thing. It's a thing. It's a stole. I got a blue stole because what season is it? Advent. You know, I brought a couple of things that I was going to show some kids. Let me, and you guys are kids because I'm sure you're younger than me. Don't count on it. Well, this is a time of the year that we think about people and have memories, and they all kind of show up in our world, don't they? So I brought two things that mean a lot to me, and I bring them out every once in a while for children's sermons because it helps me get grounded. So what do I have here? It's a, it's a shoe. Is there anything special about this shoe? Do you know what they're called? Not Oxfords, not loafers. Somebody told me what they were earlier today. They're wingtips. Oh. Now, some of you out there have had wingtips, I know. And these are very special wingtips because they came from my father. They were his. And they were something that I really wanted. Because my father, he was one of the people that brought me to church. He brought me to church and taught me about Jesus. He wore wingtips under his choir robe even, I think. And he brought me to church to tell me the story of Jesus. And today we're starting the story of Jesus all over again. And that's the roots. And then who do you think this was? Not your dad. It could have been. It could have been. But it wasn't. It was my mom's. It was my mom's. And they were the grown-ups that brought me to Jesus. They were the faith tellers in my life. And that's what we're going to hear about, is who are the tellers of our faith in the world. So I can put this on, and I can put it around my neck like my mom would, and it would remind me of what she taught me. And my dad, he would wear these to church, and it would also remind me of him. And are there choir people here? Yeah. My dad sang in the choir. He kind of sat about three rows up, and we'd watch him every Sunday morning. He was the counter. He always counted. And next to him was Uncle Carl. And Uncle Carl was one of the guys that brought me to faith as well. And I'll never forget my first communion. And my Uncle Carl was there as my sponsor. So we come to this time of Advent and hear stories that we have heard for many years. And this time, I want you to listen and hear some new stories that you can share with others. Because sharing faith is what we do generationally. We carry that message forward.
with our children. And you'll hear a little bit more about that from me. So let's pray. I'm used to starting and you responding. I don't know how you do it. Oh, must be a Lutheran church. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for elders. Thank you for those that tell us about you, about your love, your forgiveness, and your presence. May we be sharers of our faith through our actions, our words, and our deeds. Amen. Amen. And let all God's children say, Amen. Thanks for coming up. But you can't have my dad's, you can't have my dad's wingtips. I'm sorry. They are special. I have a lot of things coming out that I need to collect. Come on forward. I know I lost a shoe. God of ages in scripture, we hear stories of people like us, ordinary people, people who long to know you, people who long to follow you, people who made mistakes, people who tried to grow, old, young, native, immigrant, new to the faith, lifelong believer. In scripture, we hear stories of people like us. So just as you walked with them, help us to hear and remember all the ways that you walk with us. We are listening. We are grateful. We are yours. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the biggest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All of the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords against plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war uh, any more. Our house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. <laughs> According to St. Matthew, an account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron and Hezron, the father of Aram, and Aram, the father of Amenemadab, and Amenemadab, the father of Nashon, and Nashon, the father of Solomon, and Solomon, the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asphah. 
and Asphath, the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, and Joram, the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah, the father of Jotham, and Jotham, the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah, the father of Mananish, and Mananish, the father of Amos, and Amos, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation of Babylon, Jehonia, the father of Salatia, Salahiel, and Salahiel, the father of Zebubabu, and Zubabel, the father of Buud, and Abiudad, the father of Elakim, and Elakim, the father of Azor, and Azor, the father of Zadok, and Zadok, the father of Achim, and Achim, the father of Eloid, and Eloid, the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar, the father of Matham, and Matam, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations, from Abraham to David, are 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, the 14 generations. And from the deportation of Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. When Eileen asked me to be here today, sure. Then I looked at the scriptures. I considered calling her back from wherever she may be hiding. And I got to tell you how many times I practiced that yesterday, listened to it, read it with it, and thought to myself, what do you tell assisting ministers and readers? Pretend you know exactly what you're saying. And just stick with it, because that's the way the story is going to go. What a list of names and people. Fourteen generations. Not once, but twice. Mostly men. A few women are within that. Each of them had some disreputable things happening to them in their lives. Of course, they only talk about that with the women. They don't mention that about the men that are also in this lineage. But we come together as followers of Jesus the Christ from generations to generations and in the years ahead more generations will hear these stories the stories of the life and light and lineage that God has given to us through God's self as Jesus the Christ and that Holy Spirit that moves amongst us. We are invited into this story. We aren't spectators. We're not spectators. We're part of the story. We are part of that faith story. My Uncle Carl, that I mentioned already, that would scold us, would only sing in the sanctuary that I grew up in, facing the altar. He never faced the congregation. And you know why? He said, because my gifts as a soloist is a gift to God, back to God. It is a way that I share the gifts for generations to come. And we today are united with these people. The Advent story 
is so full of names. It's so full of names that points us to walk along with it. And where we live in this world, the days are getting shorter. It's darker outside. We're called in to be present with the Holy Spirit in this walk of Advent. I got up this morning and sat in my living room as the sun was coming up and my candles were lit around the table. For this is a time where we are seeking light in darkness. I watched the skies change, the blue, the white, the movement of clouds, and I thought, God is present in this moment, in this time, and God is calling us to sit back. God is inviting us to sit and be present. I talked to somebody yesterday that apparently had never been to one of the Rochester malls the Friday after Thanksgiving. The look on their face was, is that really? What happens? We recover from too much turkey, and bam, we're out. On to the next thing. Now, oh, Advent is a time for us to come together, to be part of the story, to be one of the generations that tells others of their faith. I didn't have much of a choice as a kid growing up to go to church. You know, when your grandfather, C. Arthur Johnson, was a Lutheran pastor, I graduated seminary a hundred years after he graduated seminary. From generation to generation, that is what we are called to. We are called to sit, to be present, and to let the story begin to unfold as we say, O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Over the next few weeks, Eileen and I are both preaching from a series called From Generation to Generation. And to tell the stories of our faith and how our stories are indeed woven together. And when they are woven together, they are stronger. If any of you are weavers, you know what happens when the weaving takes place. We have new designs and new creations and they're held tightly. So during this time of Advent, let us wonder anew about who around us has created and shared the narrative of faith with us. The narrative 
of the word made flesh. Let us tap in to those generational stories. Let's listen to each other's stories of faith. And may we become a generation of storytellers. And let everybody have their own. We don't need to build on and say, well, my story's different. But let's listen to one another's stories. Let's listen to them without judgment. And may we listen and acknowledge. And may we, each of us, be Mary. May each of us be Mary and hold the stories and treasure them in our hearts. and challenging us from generation to generation. And we believe that same God is here with us now, saying, come on in, there's room for you here. Amen. Let us pray. God of Abraham and Isaac, God of Tamar and Ruth, God of Mary and Joseph, we bow our heads today, hoping to catch a glimpse or a shimmer of you. We know that you are here with us just as you walked with every generation before, so we bring you to our prayers. Thank you for creating space for us. Thank you for seeing our scattered thoughts, 
our imposter syndrome, our fragments of doubt, and still saying, come on in. Thank you for seeing our ordinary selves with anxious concerns and unflattering habits and saying, I have bigger plans for you. Thank you for seeing our fragile egos and our uncertain relationships and saying you still belong here. Your expansive love makes room for us to breathe and we want to love with our lungs and hearts full. So today we pray, teach us how to make that same room for others. When we come face to face with stories that are different from ours, show us how to add chairs to our table. When we find ourselves face to face with stories that frustrate and test our patience, show us how to build bridges instead of walls. When we find ourselves face to face with stories that feel foreign or unrelatable, remind us to open the door and to listen fully. And now hear the deepest desires of our hearts. Prayers for those who are battling substance abuse. God of grace, Hear our prayer. From Abraham to Mary, you made room for every story, and that love continues to make room for us. Teach us to do the same for our neighbor so this world will know love. Amen.
I invite you to please stand. Let us pray together. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God through your Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty when we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair. You sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering in the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant. This cup, this cup, this cup, the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember, therefore, his life, his death, and resurrection. We await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Siblings in Christ, as you leave this place, may you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and we are loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. And from generation to generation, none of us is alone. The God of yesterday, the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth, saying, go be the person you were called to be. Love wildly. Do justice. And come back soon. And may it be so. May all of you say, Amen. <laughs>